Good evening, y'all. Tyrannosaurus Moth here with what I hope will be a short-ish video. Uh, I just realized after I did my top 20, or top 10, rather, of 2020, that I didn't do any honorable mentions, which many do, and I definitely had a number of them, as you can see. Uh, I just happened to round out to another 10. Um, but uh, I figured I'd kind of throw that on, which would also give me a chance to kind of talk about what I'm excited about as far in terms of figures coming up in 2021 and we'll kind of give you a little background on what I want to do with this channel, kind of where I hope to take it. And uh, that should be it. So hopefully this will be around the five minute mark, but we'll see when it's said and done. Uh, so first, just going over what I've got in front of us right now uh, is my kind of 10 runner ups, the honorable mentions that came out in 2020. Uh, a lot from my favorite line, which was the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. Uh, as you can see, I've got three here from that line. Uh, one of which I reviewed, which was Lord Dragon here. Um, so you can go see my review for that if you want to see kind of my full thoughts. Uh, that was, I think, yeah, it was the first video I posted. So that's a full 20 minutes. Uh, it's definitely longer than it should be. Uh, the rundown being that the aesthetics are great, the articulations definitely improvement over the base bodies that they've been doing, especially with the hips, and uh, very solid, maybe a little overpriced especially because a throne would have been better than some of the accessories they gave. Uh, so that's what kind of knocks it out of the top 10 for me. Uh, then to the other Lightning Collection figures I've got here. Um, so I literally, as of tonight, just started watching Dino Thunder, and I think it might be my, my favorite Power Rangers series. So as you can see, my other two Lightning Collection figures here are two, the other two this year that came out, and they were both from, or the other two that came out from Dino Thunder. Uh, we have Dino Thunder Red, which is just super solid. Uh, his accessories were fantastic, so a lot of love for that, especially right now. And secondly, Dino Thunder White. Um, which had a lot of controversy because the helmet was not fully painted, that black outline wasn't there, um, which really kind of ruins the look a little bit. Uh, I did paint in the, the helmet I had, uh, but Hasbro did right by everyone and sent out the, um, the replacement helmets, as you can see, that, that's on here right now, um, which was good on them. I mean, that's, that's a good showing. Um, it definitely shows that they, they, they were listening and they really did it up. I mean, it's super clean. I've seen a couple errors on other people's. Uh, I, I definitely lucked out. I think overall they did a great job on those because they didn't want to mess that up a second time. Um, and the figure's great, uh, though I did have to paint in the back of the gloves, as you can see here. Uh, I think a lot of people did even further detailing in that. So that's kind of what kept it out of the top 10 uh, for me. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, another one that got, got kept out of the top 10 despite some really good stuff, which was NECA's Alpha Predator, uh, their 100th Predator released. So that's right here. Um, incredible sculpt, great concept, especially because it was all original from NECA. Um, whoa, I'm knocking everyone down here. Ah! Nope, sorry about that, y'all. Sorry, Rogue. Oh, let's hope that's nice. I'll be able to tell um, But incredible sculpt all around. Our articulation is good. Uh, like, a lot of mobility in this thing, which is awesome. The only thing that really bugs me here, and, uh, yeah, the stand fell off, um, is the legs. And you can just do a crotch out here with it. <laughs> Uh, these are mine are super loose, and I'm, I'm sure that's something I can fix, but it barely stands up. Uh, in fact, it knocked down my background earlier, uh, I say, as I knock down other figures with it, um, and it drives me nuts. And, and I definitely think, as per my Misfits video I did, I'm just going to leave that down. Um, the uh, Holiday Fiend video, like I, I think I'm done with NECA. It's just, I can't take the... <laughs> The, the lack of quality control there. It just it feels like it's just such a, it just falls so short, especially where the sculpts, the paint, everything is just so on point. And then to have something like that just kind of make it obnoxious. It's just, can't take that over and over again. Uh, so let's move on from that and we'll go on to, uh, oh, I only have one of the black, uh, no, I've got two from the uh, Hasbro Black series for Star Wars. 
One is the Incinerator Trooper, which only had screen time of like maybe 40 seconds, but it was badass. And uh, they did a great job with the sculpt. The articulation here is good too. Uh, it uses the new Stormtrooper body, so you got some nice um, butterfly joints, and you can get really a lot of range in the legs and um, the arms. Like even though they're single, they're not double jointed. Like that's pretty nice bend. Like that's way past 90, and that's more than more than you can ask for usually when you get single joints. So um, let's see if I can get in the sand again pretty easy which is also good again quality quality figure um, just that that was more a case of just other figures were a little bit better for me for my taste and maybe pulled on nostalgia or something like that a little bit more uh, second is uh, Beskar Mando just super solid it's the same as the original Mandalorian figure so it definitely de deserves a nod and just you know keeping up with that because Mando, Mandalorian was easily one of the best shows this year. Uh, I finally got to, to watch it. It was just fantastic, so cool to have that. Um, and then we have the G.I. Joe Classified series, um, both Baroness and the Red Ninja. The Red Ninja, super solid. Basically the Snake Eyes body. And um, So you know what you're getting into if you have Snake Eyes, which most people who collect that line do. Um, and same thing, just with this little extra, like, top collar piece on it, a different head. Uh, and all the weapons that you would have gotten with these special snake eyes that came out in 2019. So, totally worth it, especially if you can find it. Um, I think Big Bad Toy Store might still have those in stock. Uh, if so, I'll probably link to those in the, the description. And Baroness, like, incredible sculpt. This is exactly what I was hoping this figure would be. Um, only drawbacks are the articulation that totally took it out of the top 10 for me uh, just like Hasbro has this problem with making figures of women have like good articulation and uh, usually issues with face sculpts at least as far as I see it because they just usually don't look like actual people uh, which is where I'll use that as my segue into the Marvel Legends I have here because we have Rogue, which is probably my favorite head sculpt I've seen maybe in the past two years. I mean, it looks like a real person. The, the expressions on both the different heads they have are great. Um, all the paint apps on this are super solid. Just incredible figure. Uh, I just happen to only get it. Uh, I got it as a, a Christmas present, but it was after the new year. So she kind of missed being on the top 10, though I, if I had gotten her before I made the, the top 10 video, she absolutely would have been on there. Next, or finally I should say, is Age of Apocalypse, Apocalypse, and this is a solid giant boy, and I have a soft spot for the whole Age of Apocalypse storyline, because that was the end uh, the last kind of bit of comics I read before I kind of got out of the whole comic deal and moved on to other things, uh, probably mostly music. So I love those designs. I love that they did this. They definitely did it justice. And it's basically the other Apocalypse build a figure they did uh, just with the Age of Apocalypse design. And it's awesome. Um, so yeah, that's my, those are my honorable mentions for 2020. Uh, past that. Uh, talking about 2021, what am I excited about? Uh, I'd say my top three, not individual figures, but just overall. Um, first thing is going to be Storm Collectibles Motaro from Mortal Kombat, which looks incredible. I think it's going to be huge, and I have no idea where I'm going to put it on the shelf or any shelf, but uh, I will definitely make room because that thing looks absolutely fantastic and it's a figure I've wanted ever since I played Mortal Kombat 3 way back in the day in the arcades to give you an idea of my age if you don't know me. And uh, after that, anything Lightning Collection, as always, as I said, it's my favorite line, it's the main line I collect, I make sure I, I get every individual like new character I can, even if I haven't seen them all yet, I'm kind of wa watching my way through, hoping to get through all the Power Rangers, or at least see a little bit of everything before the end of the month. And uh, I guess three to round that out would be Mezco's Leatherface, which... Um, 
I don't own any Mezco yet, but I've, I've heard really good things. I've watched a lot of reviews. They all seem cool, and I love Leatherface as a character, and the one that they're going to be releasing this summer looks absolutely incredible. Uh, finally, uh, <laughs> I've now brought, dragged this out twice as long as I wanted to, but it's fine. Um, so think, if you're still watching, thank you very much, especially because now we got the static screen. So yeah, I am here. Uh, I'm going to knock everything down here. I'm just going to arrange stuff while I talk, so it's a little more interesting than just all, you're looking at my top 10 honorable mentions. Um, so what do I want to do with this channel? I want to make it more interesting, and I want to get, hopefully, my, my main goal is like, 50 subscribers by the end of the year. I think that's doable, and uh, I hope that the videos I'm putting out now that I have this diorama that I just made over the past week kind of helps add some visual interest, and I hope my delivery is a little more engaging as opposed to the first few videos, which is very level and kind of finding my voice both literally and figuratively. Um, so... I hope that's the case, and beyond the 50 subscribers, just kind of want to really get up to doing at least a review a week, maybe more, and doing some different stuff, like I've got some retro reviews of older figures I have that I really want to talk about, especially my favorite figure in my collection, and beyond the retro reviews, maybe doing some vlogs and kind of getting used to actually just talking. It's like, I'm kind of rambling now, but I want to ramble in like a more concentrated way, if that makes any sense. So with that being said, I'll actually use that as my segue to say, uh, again, if you stuck it out this long in the video, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate all of you that are subscribed right now, and if you're watching this just on a whim, thank you, especially if you've waited, if you've gotten through this much of the video. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, and if you're watching and aren't so, so please subscribe, uh, like and comment too. And in terms of the comments, like this, this is a good opportunity. I want to know, like, what are you excited to see come out in 2021 for figures? And uh, what was your, what were any of your runner runners up? Like, you know, let's let's talk about that. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you so much. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, things I'm supposed to say at the end of a video, and uh, I hope, despite everything that's going on, you're having a decent beginning to 2021 as much as you, as, in so far as you can. And uh, I will see you on the next video, which should be posting very soon, because I'll have a few videos up. So thank you very much. You're all beautiful, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.